Hi, Joe Alden, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the Survival Medicine Handbook's third edition, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, a layman's guide, and the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. A while ago, I gave my opinion on the persistent notion that tampons, the feminine sanitary product, are an awesome addition to your medical kit. They aren't. I discussed what happens in a case of ballistic trauma, something I've written and spoken about a number of times over the years. When soft tissue is struck by a projectile at high speed, it causes a channel to be formed through which the projectile travels. It actually causes two channels called cavitations, one permanent one caused by the actual path and a larger temporary one caused by the energy being released into the body. Vessels and organs affected by the secondary shock wave might not even be in the direct line of the permanent cavity, but they can be damaged and they can easily bleed. All this with an entry wound that might not even perfectly fit a tampon, and penetration may go much deeper than what you could reach with the tampon. But this video isn't about tampons, it's about another feminine sanitary product, the maxi pad, also called the sanitary pad or sanitary napkin. The use of this product, in my opinion, is not a bad idea in certain situations if it's what you've got to work with. Let's look at one. Disposable menstrual pads were invented by no other than Benjamin Franklin. And guess what he originally designed them for? Not for feminine hygiene, but to help stop bleeding in wounded soldiers. So these pads have history on their side. They first became commercially available more than 100 years after their invention, and today are relatively inexpensive, especially if bought in quantity. Sanitary pads come with a thickness rating, but some also come with a number rating or thickness. This one's a five. Pretty thick. And these larger, thicker ones are the type that would give the most protection as an improvised bandage. Thinner ones could function just as a covering with less ability to absorb draining blood or other fluids. But in any case, if you look at these, they're not as pliant as say this gauze roll or let's say this improvised bandage that I made out of sheets or even a commercially available ABD pad. These are probably not the best things to really pack into an open wound. Even though they might not be a perfect wound packing, they make a very reasonable covering for an open wound though. These items aren't sterile, but they're clean, and that might be the best you can hope for in some long-term survival settings. If you get them, you should stick with the kind that don't have a scent or other additives. Maxi pads also have some adhesive, which keeps them in place for the reason they were manufactured. But this adhesive is not in the areas that would be most optimal for securing a dressing, especially if you were on the move. Of course, a little medical or duct tape would work just fine to deal with that issue. So all in all, you could do a lot worse than use a sanitary pad to cover packing or a non-bleeding open wound in long-term survival. Necessity is the mother of invention, the old saying goes, and if you're concerned about a long-term event, your medical supplies are going to run out. You'll have to improvise and think outside the box. It's just one of the factors that makes a successful medic in times of trouble. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, a big thank you for subscribing to this channel and for checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of books, medical kits, and supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. They'll help you keep it together even when everything else falls apart.